the new building of National Museum of Indonesia, Museum Nasional, stands over 700 statues in the open courtyard. The statues present the majority of past religions in Indonesia, Hinduism and Buddhism. This collection of Hindu Buddhist art includes the statue of Agastya from Magalang. Agastya is the teacher of Shiva, who has a big belly full of water and wisdom. Another one is Aditya Wataman, depicted as Bhairava from Marambahan, is the largest one in the museum. And the Majapahit Queen from Tulungwagan, with beautiful lotus on her back. The statues came from excavations from temples and palaces all over Indonesia. The space is beautiful. Um, it's very, like there's a lot of natural light, and I guess that's how the statues were supposed to be seen. How the statues are displayed brought magnificent special engagement between the visitors and the collections. The statues are displayed openly like this since the latest museum building was opened. It was over 200 years ago. Uh, some of uh, all my visitors that, that going on a tour with me, they say it's quite shocking <laughs> in the A building because they, they can see all things here mix it together randomly they don't even understand why they put it this way they put it like this all of this this construction and view building actually already be displayed like this from the dutch era 700 statues closely displaying in a beautiful courtyard this place has wowed many visitors but how was it formed and kept for so many years the story of this magnificent Yet mysterious museum courtyard traces back to the Age of Enlightenment. Uh, it's called as Batavia's Ginosca. It means the, the society of Batavia, the people of Batavia. In the 100-year memorial book, Gaden Book, leaves the signatures of country crash founders in 1778. It's about 18 country and there is uh, 148 institution was involved in Batavia Dinska. From not only Netherlands, but 18 countries members gathered together as Batavia Skinoskap, the Royal Arts and Science Association. The collections we see nowadays was collected by the members. These statues have attracted people worldwide since long, long time ago. The main founder of the association is an Italian named J.C.M. Radmancher. He donated his house to the association, filling it with statues and books about them. But the house was only opened to the members. It is now seen as the first building of Museum National, which was gone now already. But the relics are still kept and some of his books still lies in the museum library, until now. But somehow, the building could not afford to hold the collection that getting bigger, the numbers of the collection getting bigger, and they decided to make a, a new building here. This is the fourth place for the statues. The former buildings were all gone or made for other use now. The building itself and the collections became more and more valuable as time passed by. The whole building and some of the statues are registered as historical sites and relics. People can simply come close to history. <laughs> However, there lies the contradiction between engaging closely and protectively preserving the collections. But I don't feel like to touch them. Because then I think I will destroy it or maybe it will become more ugly when I touch it. You need to make a better rules here. You see, we put all the collection here, open, mm. open for free. Everyone can touch it. But we have a regulation for not letting them to touch. We will be looking, if you see some part of the collection, do not touch this, even though it's, it's open. I'm not sure. I, I am a little surprised to see them in the open. But I also trust the curators of the museum that they knew what they were doing. 
The curators of the original display have passed away already. Uh, I don't find any explanation for that. We can only observe the blueprints in the old books, written in ancient Dutch. And you can see 15 and 14 is a new building. Halaman. Halaman mean... Yes. I forget the English. Front yard. Center yard. Uh, one of them has no side. Mm. And the other one has. This has a side. The display people see now is kept with the collections as a part of the history. In order to preserve the collections in this original display without glasses and fences, visitors need to hold back their hands. The standard of preserving relics raised as our ability to preserve them raised. But in this courtyard, the way of display itself is something to preserve. These statues have been displayed openly like this for more than 200 years, giving visitors a down-to-earth experience to engage with them. In Taiwan, we share basically the same case. Bi Xi is legend as a son of dragon, with strong power to carry things. This mythological creature carries the inscriptions, and they were announced to be made in 1788 by Emperor Qianlong to commemorate the people who ended Lin Shuangwen Rebellion in the Qing Dynasty, including Officer Fu Wankang. These inscriptions were placed in Fu Wankang Temple, but the temple collapsed during the period of Japanese rule in Taiwan, and eventually, in 1960, the inscriptions were moved to Chikan Building in Taiwan, Tainan, which was built in 1652 by the Dutch people. Both Indonesia and Taiwan have relics displaying openly in the long term. If these statues or their way of display eventually have to fade away, what can we keep for the future generations? Now with the internet, digitizing might be a way to go. With online platforms to share and put on knowledge, relics can be preserved in another way and by people who care about them. A non-government organization called Wikimedia contributed to the digitization of collections in GLAM, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Digitization is not about how we preserve the physical uh, condition, the physical objects uh, in this world. It is also how we, how we are going to uh, publish or how we are going to how we are going to uh, show to the people uh, that this is our treasures here in Indonesia. So, for example, uh, you can see that one is uh, empty. There used to be a statue uh, of I think Parwati. Uh, I think you know uh, it's not there. Maybe it's somewhere. Else. In online spaces, the collections can be displayed at all places, all the time. Digitization helps to preserve the images of the relics, also spreading their stories behind more easily. You know, Indonesia is an island country. If we like to go to some place, to other place, we need to spend a lot of money. But uh, not all of the people can do that. And many students right now in the other island need to know about Indonesian culture. And we would like to uh, digitize this tattoo and then we would like to uh, make the story why this tattoo is, uh, exists and then how we can like, uh, spread the knowledge, the story behind this object. So when we put it online, everyone can access it. Every student can access it. I think uh, all of the information is uh, uh, what we can get in here. It's belong to people.
We couldn't find out the reason of this open display in the first place over two hundred years ago, but we know the reason why it is kept now by understanding the history of it. We can only look back on the history, and on what people try hard to preserve and share about these statues, whether by keeping them safe and originally displayed offline, or by extending the value of them with open platforms online. We have understood the past of this courtyard, and have pondered over the future of the statues we have. We are lucky to be in this present, because we have a chance to learn about this courtyard with amazing relics in both ways, in front of the statues, and also in front of the screen.